I told Sister Renee tonight that I was going to waste a perfectly good Sunday message. And I'm going to ruin the flow of our Acts study. Let's turn to Acts 25. And we'll read verse 22. And we're going to skip all the way down to chapter 26 and verse 28. Then Agrippa said unto Festus, I would also hear the man myself. <laughs> Tomorrow said he, thou shalt hear him. And all of these intervening verses is Agrippa hearing Paul and getting down to verse 28 of chapter 26. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Lord Jesus, touch us tonight, we pray. We thank you for your presence here. We thank you for your touch in our lives. I ask Lord Jesus that you continue to help us sense your presence. That you help us allow you to have your way in our hearts. Yes. That you would touch our ears that we might hear, our hearts that they might receive. Have your way in us tonight, we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Seek upon you, man. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. Don't fully know how to proceed here. Paul is, well, we know what Paul is. We know he's been accused of many grievous things. We know that he's appealed to Caesar. And Festus is been visited by King Agrippa and tells him all about this guy, Paul. And King Agrippa says, I would like to hear him. And he says, okay, uh, you'll hear him. And rather than thinking through all of this, I'm going to skip the preliminaries and I'm going to get to the, to the point. Everybody say praise the Lord. Paul preaches with power, not with eloquence, but with the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and he gives his witness here to King Agrippa, who knows the customs and the religion of the Jewish people, someone who has the basis to receive the preaching and the the explanations and the arguments and the and the and the teachings of Paul as he gave in the synagogues to all of uh, the Jews and converting many Agrippa knew these things and could have been swayed But he says to Paul, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And every Sunday and every Wednesday, I do my very best to persuade you. And I do my very best to persuade anybody who might stumble across these in the depths of the internet and decide to read or to watch them. I try to persuade those who have not given their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ to do so, to seek him and to make him your Lord and God. And every Sunday and every Wednesday, I try to persuade you who have given your heart to in life to the Lord Jesus Christ to do even more of that, uh, to surrender every part of your heart and every aspect of your life to him. And I do my best to persuade you to seek him more diligently 
and to follow him more perfectly, but I cannot persuade you. And sometimes I think, oh, if only I could preach this like it should be preached. If only I could preach this with, with more eloquence, and if only I could preach this more powerfully, and if only I could preach this message without messing it up and putting people to sleep. But the fact of the matter is that I cannot persuade you to be a Christian. May not cut you off. Yeah. And so many times I've delivered what I knew to be the word of the Lord to somebody, and I knew it was intended for that person at that moment and at that time, and I have seen it fall flat against the wall of rejection that has been put up. And I've seen the word of God that he gave me for when I say you, I'm looking like outside so that nobody feels like I'm speaking to you in particular, but I'm speaking to us as a whole. I have seen the word of God be rejected because we have obstinately refused to receive it. And I've seen you, and I know that if you had been paying attention to me throughout the years, you would have seen me also miss the word of God because we are lost in the glow of our phones. I cannot persuade you. But I've also seen people respond to the presence of God and come to the altar, and, and I get a sense of hope that maybe, just maybe, I've persuaded somebody, and, and then they feel better about the conviction that they feel and but they don't bring that change that God wants to do in their heart with them as they leave the altar. Because I cannot persuade you. Maybe if I could put a sad story in there, and maybe if I could guilt trip you, and you know, maybe if I could manipulate emotions, but right. even if I could, and even if I would, that would not persuade you. And no, I'm not going to try because that would be wrong. Mm -hmm. But even if you responded in the, in the emotion of the moment, there's going to come a dark night or a bleak morning. And there's going to come a time when you feel utterly alone and utterly hopeless. There's going to come a time when you start to wonder if everything you've ever believed was all a lie. And even if I could persuade you right now, in that moment, I would not be able to sway you. And almost, Agrippa said, that persuades me. Almost, man of God, I've heard your testimony, I've heard what you said, and I felt the stirring in my soul, but that's not enough to make me change my heart. I'm too comfortable right now, I'm happy being the host of my own life. I'm not willing to give up seeking my own desires to surrender myself to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Paul could not persuade Agrippa. He couldn't persuade Felix, even though Felix also knowing of the law and knowing uh, the religion, even though he trembled in fear and conviction, he was not persuaded. Paul could not persuade Festus. Festus simply decided that Paul was insane to believe that uh, the Christ should suffer and raise from the dead to show himself a light to all people, Jew and Gentile alike. Paul couldn't persuade Felix, he couldn't persuade Festus, and he couldn't persuade Agrippa. Almost thou persuadest me. So I can't persuade you. Your salvation does not depend on my eloquence. Right. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Hey, Lord. Your walk with God does not depend on 
whether or not I can hit you in the feels. Your salvation does not depend on how well I preach, how well I can prance, or how well I can holler. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I can only bring it to the doorway. Right. Okay. I can only feed you what the Lord has given me to feed you. Thank you, Jesus. And I can try to show you how it affects me, and I can try to show you what, and explain why it should affect you the same way. I can try to show you the glory of God revealed in Jesus Christ as he has revealed yeah. himself to me, but I cannot persuade you. I can only tell you what I've seen. Yeah. Yeah, Lord, how many you? Right. In the story of Lazarus and the rich man, The rich man tells Abraham, if you send me back to my brothers, I'll tell them all about this. And, and you know, the fact that I came back from dead will be enough to convince them to believe. And they can, they can serve God. They can be righteous and they can avoid this torment that I am suffering. But Abraham tells him, and this is in Luke 16, 31. He says, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded though one rose from the dead. Hopefully, there are times when the word of the Lord penetrates your heart in spite of the preacher. Hopefully, there are times when as the preacher delivers what the Lord has given to them, that you can feel the presence of God. Hopefully, in the time of worship, as we just experienced, you can feel the presence of the Lord. But no matter how wonderfully we sing, the worship cannot persuade you. No matter how eloquently the preacher preaches, he cannot persuade you. Amen. Look past me. Look past the words and the foolishness of preaching and see the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he is waiting to reveal himself to you more fully. Hallelujah, Jesus. I cannot persuade you, but he can persuade you. He can give you the evidence with which you will be persuaded. But you have to receive his word. And you have to respond to him. Yes. The Lord Jesus Christ himself. Is sufficient. Yes. Yes. For you to be persuaded. Yes. Only your own personal revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. As the one and only almighty God. Will persuade you. And keep you. So this is a short little message on a topic we haven't gotten to. But the Lord put this so strongly on my heart that this is what we're doing. And, and I felt like it was confirmed for me. So yes. don't wait for me to be persuasive because I'm not going to persuade you. Yeah. There is no argument I can make which is going to change your mind yes, sir. or change your heart. You need to look through me yeah, to see the one whose words yes, are proclaimed. Yes, and he can change your heart. Yes, you can listen to me all day, every day, and never see Jesus. You can live alongside me for decades and never see Jesus. And it's not because I'm not going to do my best. Right. It's not for nothing that the Lord says, he that hath ears to hear, <laughs> let him hear. And this is part of why we're going through our spiritual health check. The scriptures warn us, warns us to be uh, wary and careful of this world in which we live. Because this world is full of people who have eyes which do not see and ears which do not hear. And not because they were born blind and deaf, but because they are rebellious. Because they have closed their ears to the hearing. Because they've closed their eyes to the seeing. 
We read in Ezekiel 12, 2, Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house, which have eyes to see and see not. They have ears to hear and hear not, for they are a rebellious house. And then we look to the words of the Lord in Matthew 13, 15, for this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. There are people actively rejecting the evidence. I can't persuade them. But the Lord continues on, but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. And when he mentioned the prophecy of Isaiah, that's Isaiah 6, 9, and 10, where the Lord tells Isaiah, Go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat. And make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and convert and be healed. So many times I've seen people refuse the word of God because of their rebellion. And I've been frustrated because I couldn't change their stubborn refusal to receive the word of the Lord. And I've been frustrated because I've logically convinced someone of the oneness of God through evidence and through the scripture. And by convinced, I, I should rather say I've gotten to where they had no nothing they could object to, where they had no flaw in the argument. And faced with incontrovertible proof, they say, well, I don't believe that. See, I can't persuade you. The very best I can do is give you the, the meat the Lord has provided me to give you. Right. Eat or don't eat, it's out of my control. Yes. Hear or don't hear, it's out of my control. This doesn't let me off the hook. Okay. I still have to provide what the Lord has given me. It's my job to sow the seed of the word of God. And it's my heart for, for you that makes me urge you to let that seed take root in your heart. And even though that I know that my words are, are inadequate and insufficient, I can only urge and, and you know pretend and try to persuade you that when you feel the presence of God to embrace it, and when you feel that call of the Lord in your heart to run to it, open your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and receive the revelation of who he is. Receive him and make him the king in your life. So you can't wait for me to persuade you. You need to look past me and see him. Paul never stopped trying to persuade people, and so okay. neither will I. Yeah. He writes in 2 Corinthians 5.11, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. <laughs> and the New Revised Standard Version says it this way, and I, I feel they capture the sense better of the verbs based on what very little I know of Greek grammar. They say, therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. So we offer the evidence, and we tell the truth, and we stand, and we proclaim the word of God, and we proclaim the Lord Jesus Christ to the best of our abilities, but whether or not you receive it is up to you. But if you will receive it, you will start to see him more and more clearly. If you will receive it, you will respond by seeking him with 
more and more of your heart. Yeah. Okay. And if you receive him, you will be able to see him. And when you do, you can receive him or you can choose to reject him. Agrippa says, almost thou persuadest me. And my role is to preach the word of the Lord, and it's your job to be persuaded. Paul writes in Galatians 1, 9, through 9 and 10, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Because I read from the NRSV a second ago, we'll, we'll do it again here. As we have said before, and so now I repeat, if anyone proclaims to you a gospel contrary to what you say, or contrary to what you receive, let that one be accursed. Am I now seeking human approval or God's approval? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still pleasing people, I would not be a servant of Christ. We are not seeking human approval. I'm not seeking human yeah. approval. I, I would like human approval. But I'm doing what the Lord has given me to do. Yes, Lord. Shut up. Go ahead and do what the Lord has given you to do. Yeah. You can't persuade them. Right. You can give them the evidence. Yes, sir. You can set up the introduction. Okay. You can create a spirit of worship. They can feel the presence of God. Yeah. But ultimately, they must be persuaded. Yeah. And they can only be persuaded by seeing the Lord Jesus Christ yeah. and choosing to receive him. Yeah. Okay. So will you be persuaded to follow Jesus? That's out of my hands. Will you allow his chastening to correct and perfect you? That's out of my hands. Another way that word can be used, in another form of that word at least, is to feel confidence or to be convinced. And so I look through here and I see Paul's testimony. It's a powerful testimony. It's to one who would know and understand where this is coming from. And, and he would understand why it is that uh, it would be why Paul would be proclaiming that the Christ must suffer and die and rise again and be a light to the Jews and the Gentiles. Agrippa had all the background to be persuaded, but he wasn't. We can serve the Lord all our lives and at one point decide that all of the evidence is no longer sufficient. So, I want to persuade you to follow Jesus. Lord. I want to persuade you to make him the host in your life and to make him your Lord and your God. I, I want to convince you to follow him and put your trust in him. But nothing I say is going to make a difference when you're out trying to live it. I want to persuade you that he's able to save you to the uttermost and that he's able to keep you and sustain you. But if I cannot persuade you, he can. Mm. If I cannot persuade you, then what I can say is that if you will follow him, he will persuade you that what he says is true. If you will follow him, he will prove himself to you. There will be valleys. There will be tragedies. There will be dark places. And there, there will be times when you may not believe that he is there. But even while you do not believe that he is there, he will be there. And even when you believe that you're all alone, he will keep you. 
yes. in spite of you. Right. Thank you, Jesus. And he will sustain you even while you do not realize that you are being sustained. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. But there's one day that you will look back and you will say, well, now I see that he was there and that he kept me. Yeah. David said, I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. The writer of Hebrews, speaking of what Christianity today calls the, uh, the faith hall of fame, says that they died in faith, being persuaded that the promises were real and dependable. How could they be persuaded when they lived in faith and died in faith and never saw the promise? Because they encountered the one who promised because they walked with the one who promised him. Yeah. And they, knowing him, knew that those promises were real and dependable. Paul, while in Corinth, having suffered persecution, having been jailed and beaten, having been stoned by a mob and left for dead, wrote to the church in Rome, saying in Romans chapter 8, 38 and 39, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now he writes that he's been in fear often, and tremblings often, that he suffered, that he's known how to be uh, abased. And yet he says, I, have, I am persuaded. I have seen him and I have seen his proof yes. that nothing <laughs> can separate me from his love. See, I can tell you all along about the miracles he's done in my life. I can tell you all day long about how he's been faithful to me. But when you hit your tough time, yeah. all of my joy and my promises are going to mean nothing to you. And let's be real. There's going to be times in my life when all of the times that God has kept me and all the times that God has sustained me is not going to be sufficient for me at that point. But I can be persuaded when I look at him and I look at the evidence that he has provided in my walk with him. While Paul was imprisoned in Rome, he wrote to the church in Philippi, uh, and we read this in Philippians 1.6, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Praise. It's the same word he's saying, I am persuaded that the one who has begun a good work in you will continue doing this good work in you until he comes back to get you. Has he done the good work in you? If he has, and he has. Yes, Lord. He will continue you, that good work. Why is Paul convinced of this? Because he's seen it. Because he's seen him over and over and over. I can't persuade you. But look to the one I'm telling you about. Praise look Jesus. at his effect in your life yeah. and what he's done for you. Praise and Jesus. you will be persuaded. Jesus. In what we believe to be Paul's last letter, it's at least his last recorded letter to Timothy. We read in 2 Timothy 1.12. For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, 
and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Yes. See, he's suffering. He's abased. He knows the end is near, but he's not concerned because he knows the one in whom he has believed. Hallelujah. He's experienced his keeping power day after day. Yeah. And so facing his execution, he can say, I am extremely, supremely confident that he can keep that which I've committed yeah. until that day. I can't persuade you. I can only urge you to seek him. I can't persuade you, but I can urge you to having found him to make him the Lord and the host of your life. Yes, Lord. I can't persuade you, but I can urge you to accept him into your heart and to make him your king and your Lord. He will never let you down. He will never lead you, and he will never forsake you. And I can encourage you, but I can't persuade you. I can urge you, but I can't convince you. But I promise you, if you will follow him, he'll do the persuading for you. Thank you. Thank you. If you will just abide in him, you will one day be able to say, as we read in Revelation and as these writers we just mentioned did, we are persuaded because his promises are yea and amen. His, he is unchanging, and that means his word will never fail. He is the way maker. He is the miracle worker. Yeah. He is the promise keeper, the light in the darkness. And you don't have to take my word for it. In fact, please don't take my word for it. Yeah. Find out for yourself. Yeah. Because if you follow him, he will prove himself over. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Right, Lord. Even when we don't see it, he's worthy. Yes, yes Father. Even when we don't believe it, he's worthy. Even when we wish you'd take a day off, he's worthy. Yes, Lord. Agrippa says, I want to hear this man. And Paul gives him this amazing testimony. Praise the Lord. And Agrippa says almost, ah, it's good, but not quite enough. Oh, Lord. And that gives me hope because I've owned so many great messages. Yeah, sure. I've stood up <laughs> for an hour. I'm not going to take that I'm not going to take that person. Oh, so, I stand by it, though I have blown many great messages and been completely unable to get the point across. And I've spent hours trying to get the point across and completely failed. And nobody needs to agree with me. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, it's not up to me to persuade you. Yes, sir. But right. well, take what the Lord has given you. Right. And look through me to see him. Yes, sir. Yes. And yes. follow him. And over and I'm over not. and over again, Lord Jesus. he will prove that his word is true. Yes. And you can trust him. Yes. Right. Thank you, Jesus. So now, next week, I've got to go back and cover a chapter and a half of the book of Acts. <laughs> we've, we've ruined the timeline. We skipped the we skipped good part, or the bad part, rather. But the Lord put that on my heart tonight. That's all right. That's good. good. good Thank you, Jesus. Don't wait for me to convince you. Yeah, Jesus. Go to Him. Yeah. Follow Him. Yeah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Every time we pray, I just listen.